Greatest injustice is done, and my people is done by the way of infection. infection. Killing us slowly, erasing our history, death by the way of deception. God, do you know? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know? God, do you know what you are? God, do you know what you are? Many of you have seen the new series on the Epix Cable Channel entitled The Godfather of Harlem. The series focuses on legendary Harlem underworld figure Bumpy Johnson and his interactions with the black liberation theorist and activist Malcolm X. It also features Congressman and Reverend Adam Clayton Powell Jr., perhaps the most effective black politician in our history. This new cable series depicts Adam Clayton Powell Jr. as a slick talking, manipulative womanizer and congressman. People may not, however, understand the importance of this powerful black politician and activist and his tremendous impact on black people throughout Harlem and the United States. This clip will help you understand the importance of this often controversial but always powerful and effective black man, Adam Clayton Powell Jr., more than a TV character. Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was born on November 29, 1908, in New Haven, Connecticut. His father, Adam Clayton Powell Sr., rose from poverty in Virginia to become a prominent educator and pastor at Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem. His leadership led to church renovations and the expansion of the church, growing the congregation to 10,000 people. Adam Clayton Powell Jr. grew up in a relatively wealthy household and therefore had the opportunity to earn a formal education at a time when few black people did. Because he and his family were biracial, he had very light skin and hazel eyes, which allowed him to pass for white. And while attending Colgate University as an undergraduate, he did actually pass for white. After being scolded by his father for this and for being an underachieving student with no purpose or direction. Powell became an excellent student and assistant pastor to his father. With a renewed sense of purpose, he earned his bachelor's degree from Colgate University in 1930 and went on to earn his master's degree in religious studies from Columbia University. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, Powell became a respected church leader and community activist. He expanded the church's food and clothing program. He became a civil rights leader 20 years before the civil rights movement, and he recorded an impressive list of accomplishments. His Don't Shop Where You Can't Work campaign led several businesses to hire black workers in Harlem for the first time. His mass meetings, rallies, rent strikes, and boycotts led institutions like Harlem Hospital to hire black workers and to hire them in higher paid positions. Way before the Montgomery bus boycott in the 1950s, Powell led a bus boycott in Harlem, which led the Transit Authority to hire hundreds and later thousands of black workers for the first time. He forced white pharmacies in Harlem to train and hire black pharmacists to work there. His efforts led the New York City University System, CUNY, to hire black professors for the first time. He was often quoted as saying, Mass action is the most powerful force on earth. As long as it is within the law, it's not wrong. And if the law is wrong, change the law. Powell practiced what he preached using mass action and legislative reforms to advocate for his people. In 1941, he became New York City's first black city council member, and four years later, he positioned himself to exert even more power when he was elected to Congress as the representative of Harlem. During his 45 years as a congressman, he distinguished himself as being one of the boldest, most outspoken, defiant, and productive black politicians in our history. Unlike other leaders of the time, Powell understood the need for black solidarity, despite differences of opinion. And he met and worked with a wide variety of other black leaders, including Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, and Dr. King, to name a few. Powell was unafraid to challenge white conservative traditions and policies that discriminated against black people. For instance, the barbershop, restaurant, and gym facilities of the U.S. Congress 
had a policy that prevented black workers from using them. Powell challenged and ultimately changed these segregationist policies by bringing, for instance, his black constituents into the congressional restaurant. He also urged United States presidents to support emerging nations in Africa and Asia as they gained their independence from colonialist powers. In fact, he attended the Bandung Conference in April of 1955 and was the only black person or person at all from the United States to do so. The Bandung Conference was a conference of newly independent Asian and African nations, famously referred to by Malcolm X in his message to the grassroots speech. But Powell's work didn't just impact Harlem, Congress, or international politics. The civil rights movement in the United States would not have been possible, or at least anywhere near as effective, without Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Using a strategy he called the Powell Amendment, he used his power to require that federal funds be denied to any jurisdiction in the United States that maintains segregation. Eventually, his strategy and stand helped to craft the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlawed discrimination based on race, color, religion, gender, or national origin, and prohibited segregation in schools, employment, and public facilities. You may not be somebody that's into study of history or political science. You may not know anything about Adam Clayton Powell Jr. You may not care about Adam Clayton Powell Jr. But rest assured, if you are a black person living in Harlem, a black worker or student anywhere in the United States, or a member of the African diaspora anywhere in the world, your life has been positively affected by the work of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. So as you see, he was far more than a TV character. Keep the faith, baby. As I walk the streets of the Harlems of the world, the black Harlems and the white Harlems, people are depressed. They are frustrated. They are downtrodden. They see no hope. They see no tomorrows. And I say to them always, keep the faith, baby. I say this because all over the world, people are not receiving God. They're not getting the assurances that once were given. Promises have been broken, and their dawn refuses to rise. They're walking in the midnight of sorrow, in the midnight of frustration, in the midnight of despair. Too long have they been promised the good life by the great white fathers. Too long have they waited in vain, black and white, poor and illiterate for the better jobs, better housing, better education, better hospitals. Yet the conditions have not changed. Except for those who have always lived in the penthouses, for the people who live in the basements, in the cellar, their lives are still drab, ugly, have no hope. And I say to them, keep the faith, baby. You may be small to your oppressors, but you're bigger in your self-respect as a human being, because as a human being, nobody is better than you are. Let's strike these blows for freedom. Strike them with our minds. Strike them with our unbridled tongues. Strike them with our strides as we walk across God's world. Strike them with our heads held high.